saved and say amen. Amen. I praise the Lord. Good to be here this morning. Thank God for you being here. Uh, I thank God for him being here. Amen. 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 It'd be fine with you. We'll, we'll gather in prayer in service today. That'd be fine with you. Amen. Anybody this morning, God's been good to you. Like share, maybe you got something on your heart. What's on your heart this morning? Get on the phone and 
Let Big Tommy know. Yeah. This is exactly what happened. Come to find out they had some good talks and very recently, and you know, God will have his way in that situation, but I just feel blessed this morning because the same love I have through Jesus, through the love of Jesus, I know others have. Yeah. And what a great feeling it is to be able to share that. If you would have said nothing and just give me a hug, I could have cried in the hallway and went to Central. The power of his love, it affects me. Yes, sir. I'm thankful this morning just, just to be able to feel it. Amen. Because a lot of times we get so busy. We get so wrapped up in seasons of life or holidays or schedules and calendars that sometimes we can overlook what means the most. And what means the most is merely loving one another, being there for one another. Amen. And I'm thankful that the Lord is always there for me. Amen. And He always places His people in my way, just as He can yours, and He does yours. Amen. And I just feel overly thankful and blessed this morning. I enjoyed the Sunday school. Uh, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed everything. It was pretty normal getting out of the house all the time. But we get here, and the love is the same. Yeah. They need to know that. For that, I'm thankful.
Joshua this morning, the book of Joshua, chapter number one. Joshua, chapter number one. I appreciate the ministering of the Lord, don't you? I remember Pastor Bob, when he preached Thanksgiving meetings, uh, he was talking about how Rob would uh, play football. He said, there's times I'd stand up there in the top corner of the bleachers and I'd yell down, Rob, get in there. Of course, I can't do it as good as Bob can. There's some services we gather in and you can just about hear God Almighty from the throne just cheering us on. You know what I'm saying? And then there's some days you can just about feel him wrap his arms around you. Yeah. Preacher Billy Fields will put it this way. There's nothing like a, a big hug from Jesus. Book of Joshua chapter 1. If you're able this morning, let's stand together. We respect and give honor to the word of the Lord. I've, I've had this on the soul. <laughs> For a little bit now, and uh, was born between here and Romans, and just ever since woke up this morning, everything has just lined this way. I appreciate how God does things. I do. Joshua chapter number one, verse number five. Joshua one verse five. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. This is God speaking, by the way. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for inheritance, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. That's the reading of God's word. You can be seen if you would. I love and I appreciate the book of Joshua. Um, just hang there with me if you would. The book, keep the book open. Um, we'll pray together. Our Father in heaven, we look to you, God. We thank you for this day. Jesus, thank you for the ministering spirit of the Holy Ghost, Father, that's helped us today, that spoke to our hearts, spoke to our soul, spoke to our affections, spoke as we needed. Jesus, we need you this day. Help me be a part. Don't, don't let me be a stop sign. Jesus, help me help. Don't let me hurt. God, I love you, and I love our dear church, and I thank you for placing us here and Lord, when I say us, I'm talking about everyone in the building. Thank you for placing us here at the harbor, but also thank you for placing us here today. God, as Josh said, it, it's been worth gathering in today. Yeah. Lord, I pray you have to save somebody, Lord. Strengthen, heal, encourage, whatever you want to do. You are fully allowed to do it in this house. I love you, and I'm counting on you. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Need your prayers to the Lord would help us today. Uh, I want to I want to give you it would be alright before I give you the title. Look with me, Joshua 1 and 1. Joshua 1 and 1. Joshua 1 and 1 would say this. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore rise, go over this Jordan. And all this people unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given you, as I said to Moses. And man, I, I want to give you this. And, uh, is it all right if we spend some time in the warm-up before we get to the message? Uh, I want to say this. How many of you have ever looked at someone and said, man, that's a big shoes to fill? <laughs> done it. Been there, done that. And if you're not awful careful, if we are not awful careful, we will spend more time gazing at how big the shoes are to fill and not live for God ourselves. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Uh, and I, I say this. Moses is a gigantic figure of the Bible. He just is. There's no way around that. Uh, and Joshua... Did not know the Moses of old. Did not know the murderer. Did not know the 
the one that was in the basket that was shipped down the Nile. Didn't know that one. The only Moses that Joshua knew is Hero Moses, Deliverer Moses. I want to say this to you. In Joshua's life, it's got to be completely in awe. It's got to be scared to death. You go from holding up the arms of Moses, and now you're pretty much the next Moses. Anybody with me? I want to preach you this thought this morning if we can. The promise is in the past. The promise is in the past. Amen. Thought about going with the past as a promise, but I didn't want to get us flack for copyright. Amen. Uh, I want to preach you this morning. The promise is in the past. Uh, here God lays out before Joshua everything that's coming, every, every bit of ground that your soul and your foot shall touch, I've already given to Moses. And Moses is gone. And the fact that Moses is gone and you're here, you have the same promise. Uh, I, I want to say this, uh, and I want to make this a small note. Uh, death is scary and it's hard for anyone. Uh, and it'll often leave a vacancy. Uh, but I, I want to say this, one of the scariest things, and I know you can hear the nervousness in my voice. I'll get there in due time. Uh, but I, I want to say this, one of the scariest things about the death of the hero is it's time to pick up the man and move. Amen. And here Joshua is. And uh, man, there's, there's all kinds of problems here. There's a promised land yet to pursue. There's blessings yet ahead. And I want to say this. Here we are in the book of Joshua. And there's a promised land yet to pursue. But you got to remember we're in the book of Joshua. Uh, what does that matter? Uh, the book of Matthew would tell us that uh, we're not looking for a promised land. The book of Matthew would tell us that we are looking for a kingdom. Amen. And then Abraham. Uh, God would tell us in the book of Hebrews, and I'm getting to touch ahead just a little bit. God would tell us through Abraham uh, that he looked for a city whose builder and maker is God. Amen. I want to say to Joshua, I know that you can't be Moses, and I know that you're scared to death, but there's still more good ahead of you than there is behind you. Amen. Uh, there's times that the trial and tragedy of the moment uh, would get us in such a way that we feel like uh, our best days are far behind us. And I'm not just talking about of age, but uh, there's times that sorrow and sadness can make us feel uh, that there's no more good times ahead. Uh, maybe there's decent days ahead. Uh, maybe there's okay days ahead. Uh, maybe we'll smile and we'll have joy for other people's sake, but as far as our life is concerned, our best days are over. I, I want to say this to you. I, this book is not named Second Moses. I, this book is not named the one that came after. I, this book is named Joshua. Amen. I, Joshua, I, it is your time, my friend. I, and I know that that's hard to understand. I, but I want to say this. There'll never be another Moses. I, never will be. Never have been. That's not because he was that special. It's because he's the only Moses. Amen. I want to preach to everybody in the house this morning. Nobody is expecting you to be the hero. Nobody's expecting you to be the church of 30 years ago. Nobody's expecting you to be the person that you're looking at their shoes and saying, I'll never be them. But there is an expectation for you to be the first. 
Joshua. And I'm saying the exact same thing. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Have listened, my friend, today. Have you need to know? Amen. You look back on every generation that's came before you. Amen. God has made them the promise. Amen. As I was with your grandparents, so will I be with you. As I was with your parents, so will I be with you. You need to know that the promise is in the past. As God was with everyone before you, you are no exception. God is with you. Amen. Have listen, my friend. I want to take notice. Amen. Of a few things if we can this morning. Amen. As God was with Moses. And this is what I love. God even told Joshua how he needed to act in response to the promises of God. Amen. I found out this week I was wrong about something. Amen. I believe preachers can be wrong every now and then. Even someone with the last name Lay can be wrong every now and then. Amen. I want to say this. I've always said there's somewhere between two and four thousand promises in the Word of God. I'm wrong about that. You forgive me. I preach that here. I found out this week that there's a little bit over 7,200 promises in the Word of God. Amen. Can I say this? Those promises were with Abraham. Guess who they're with? They're with you. Amen. I don't know if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Is it all right if I call so many names out? Is everybody all right with that? Amen. Because we have 7,200 promises of the Word of God in this blessed Bible, God says, as I was with Abraham, I am with Brother Matt. Amen. As I was with Abraham, I am with Brother Larry. Amen. As I was with Hannah, so I am with Miss Hillary. As I would. And we can just keep going on. Moses is 
raised. He's born, if you will, in a horrible time. Hey, Amen. Can I ask you something? How many of us would admit that today is a horrible time? Anybody admit that? Hey, Amen. There's only four or five of us. The rest of us must be still living in Mayberry. Amen. Hey, listen to me, my beloved friend. I want to say this to you. Hey, Moses is born in a time, Eli. Hey, Amen. The Hebrew boys are about to be killed. Hey, Amen. There have gone proclamation out. Hey, Amen. All Hebrew boys will be killed on one side. Amen. Including all babies and Moses is born. Amen. I want to say this to you, my friend. Oh, boy, what a worry and what a faint-hearted, if you will, a preacher Chris that runs through Moses' mother's heart. And because as soon as that baby cries, Josh, the attention is drawn to that baby. Amen. And the soldiers, Pharaoh and the soldiers are coming after that baby. Oh, I want to preach to you. A baby's born in 2022. Same 
Hey, man, I don't know. I've been on airplanes before, and I like airplanes. They're a death tube. <laughs> Listen, I'll never forget the first time I was on one. I'm going to finish this today. Ain't going to be no blessing part two. <laughs> Listen to me. Hey, man, I'll never forget the first time I was on one. I scared death of them yesterday. I don't like heights, and I don't like death tubes. Hey, man. Hey, boy, there was a little kid that was sat behind us. Hey, man, little 10, 11 year old boy. Hey, man, mom and dad should have gave him not to a boot sleep. Now, listen to me. Hey, man, he started counting off. They came over to the intercom and said, Here in just a moment, we'll be taking off. Hey, man, and Miss Kim, that little boy said, He shouted out real nice and loud, 10 seconds until we all die. Hey, man, and I was just sitting there shivering. And he said, 10.
shame of his regret of his past sin. That took away the sting and the, of the shame and the stain of his past life. Hey, can I, hey, can I ask you something this morning? How many of you have been forgiven from God? Anybody been forgiven from God? Oh boy, can I look at you and tell you something today? Hey, whatever past you regret, you are not Amen. 
was forgiven. Hey, what do you mean by that, Miss Christie? This is what I'm telling you. Hey, Eli, there was a bush that was burning, and it wasn't burning out. And the only reason, Randy, how that, that bush was burning was so he could look Moses face to face and say, you are forgiven. Hey, can I ask you something? How there's some times how you come into an altar, you don't get in your heart that you've been forgiven. How sometimes, hey, man, you don't get it from the preacher that you've been forgiven. How about every once in a while, Brad, how maybe a kid will come up to you. Hey, man, and look at you and make some mistake. Hey, you'll forgive them. Hey, man, that kid just might look at you and say, hey, why would you forgive me? And you get to look at that kid, Holly, and say, why? Because I love you. And you'll know what God will do. He'll say, ding, ding.
Amen. We were winning the battle. We were winning the war. As soon as Moses' heart started falling, and you've got to remember this, Moses, brother, brother Bob, at this time, he's elder. At this time, he's waxing weak. Amen. Aaron and her would look up at Jessica, and they would see Moses and his arms were beginning to fall. Amen. And this is what would happen. Hey, I appreciate people uh, that won't just pray for folks. Uh, I appreciate folks that will put the prayers next. Amen. I do. Uh, this is been my friend. Hey, and Aaron and her uh, would go up and climb the mountain. Uh, can I preach to you something today? It's not easy loving people, but you still ought to love them. Amen. Amen. But can I let you know, sometimes people come to you, Dawson, and they need help. They need love for something. Yeah. And sometimes it ain't the easiest things to talk about. But sometimes they ain't the easiest things. I can remember this. You stay with me. Amen. I can remember there's been times, Miss Rhonda, that our family, my own family, we've been in some situations. And I've had this thought to myself, Miss Patty, amen. I can't believe that my family is in this right now. Uh, can we admit some pride real quick? Uh, we see all the bad that happens to everybody else's family. And we get so used to praying for them, uh, but we never think it will come to our own family. Uh, and then things happen in our family. And it crosses our mind, James. I can't believe this is in my own house and it's in my own family. Amen. I can remember that. But I can't let you know. But I've been thought, Josh, but why in the world would I go up that house? Surely I'm not the only one Karen Bowden that sees that Moses is struggling. Uh, can I let you know something? Uh, Joshua, you're going to struggle. Hey, can y'all hear me? Uh, you're going to struggle. Uh, Chase, you're predicting my doom. I'm predicting your humanity. You're going to struggle. Hey, man, I look up at the choir. Lord, I look up at the choir this morning, and I see faces and hope, faces of love. Uh, but can I also let you know? Hey, man, you forgive me for this minute. I know the struggles that this one's going through. And I know some of the struggles that that one's been through. And I know some of the struggles that this one's been through. And I know some of the struggles this one's been through. Every microphone that's up here, I can look and I can pray and I can weep over. Amen. And every time I look at y'all standing up here and get a little tear in the choir, I just look and I say, please help them. Please help them.
and then I literally show you what. How many years do they water in the wilderness? Anybody tell me this? How many years? 40. You get a map, Sydney, and you look at that. Do you all know what they literally did for 40 years? Walk in a blessed circle.
did not cost you the blessings of the future. There's times, Chase, you and I sit in our laws and all of our bad decisions, Sydney, of our past. Brother Raymond, we just, I have to call you Brother Raymond, not because you're dad, but I got two pastors now. You can say he can preach, I'll be JJ Ministry. But we look at all of our mess ups, Courtney. And we look at the awesome things we want God to do for us in the future. And there's something in us that says, I've messed up too much. And Joshua would even say that. But you all know what God would look at Joshua and say? As I was with Moses. Prophet is on. Don't worry about my letter and I'll pick her up again.
I'll ask you today, how many of you can look back at elders and family, maybe ancestors, stories you've heard, you've said something like this, I don't know how they made it. They made it the same way you're going to make it. By the promises and grace of God. Amen. There's, there's times we look at God's Word and we, we, we have become too smart for our own good in some ways. And what I mean by that is we try to find hope in God's Word. And, and, and I'm going to encourage you to be mighty, mighty careful when you try to pick apart your faith by knowledge, if you're not careful, you'll eliminate your faith. Yeah. How so? If God's so good, why did he do this? Why did God let this happen? There's no way that these things happen the way they did, like the Bible says. <laughs> I want to encourage you. If you're going to pick apart details, you ought to look at them good. Yeah. When Moses, when God looks at Joshua and says, as I was with Moses. Hey, can I let you know something? Another reason he picked Moses to say that about, guess who Joshua knew? It might not help you at all that God looks at Joshua and says, as I was with Moses. Well, why? You don't know Moses and you don't know Joshua. But there's somebody in your life that held to God's hand for exactly what you're going through and worse than you're going through. And you know what God can look at you and say? As I was with, I would do as well. That's the truth. God looks at Joshua and says, as I was with Abraham, and he goes, you going to make me some ham? He didn't know Abraham. I'm letting you know, and I mean this will be done today, you do not have to look far to see what God has brought people through. I appreciate you being here today. We got any announcements? Say this. Don't forget, Thursday night we'll be here at 6.30, Lord willing. Sunday morning, we're back at 10 o'clock for Sunday school worship at 11. That's not Christmas. Christmas is the next week. Christmas, two weeks from now, we have service here at 11 o'clock. I can't wait. You know what you all do? I know next week's quote our Christmas service, and we'll have a good crowd. That's fine. That's good. We got, well, hey, y'all, everybody's good. Yeah, Lord, it's 15. Doesn't the church look beautiful with Christmas decorations? Amen. Yeah. And, and then, next Sunday, you, you've done yep. fancy Nancy photography. <laughs> we will have two places you can take pictures. You can take a picture by the tree. Yeah. But I know my wife, and it will not suffice her to just have pictures at the tree. <laughs> and it won't just suffice her to have pictures out in, in, in the fellowship area. We'll have to have pictures both places. You want Christmas pictures? Miss Nancy will be here for that. Um, Christmas will be here at 11 o'clock. What I was going to tell you all, you all dangle over your family's head. Boy, you don't have to give me anything for Christmas. You know, make it real sad. Make it believable. But you know what you all to do? You all to come to church. Boy, just made the world.